What's up, Greg? Lately, I've been seeing a lot of discourse around alpha male podcasts on YouTube. I've seen a lot of really good commentary videos talking about these insanely misogynistic podcasts where the hosts, under the ruse of giving dating advice for men, will basically just insult women for an hour straight. Guys, here at the Fit Wolf Podcast, we know that the dating game is tough these days, you know? Men don't know what women want and are finding it harder and harder to find a good girl to settle down with. So tip number one to finding a good girl is invent a time machine. Invent a time machine and go back to the 1750s because that's the only way you're gonna find a decent woman because every woman nowadays is a thought that's right every single Michelle out there that I used to date a month ago is a thought they get mad at the dumbest things like saying that women have no inherent value and their only purpose on this earth is to bear my children and they forget to turn off location sharing even though they broke up with me a month ago Michelle I know you're over at my friend Brandon's house right now I'm outside but I think I might have found something that takes things one step further I saw this video on reddit the other day that's a trailer for something called the war room and instead of being a podcast for these like alpha male, misogynist, entrepreneur type guys. This is a club for those same types of guys. After I joined the war room, that was the year I made $100,000. On the surface, this kind of just seems like a trailer for a club where you get to hang out with a bunch of bald guys and smoke cigars and talk about business and making money. One year ago, I did not even have a business. I didn't make money. Now I make five figures every month. I didn't have a business. I didn't make money. I didn't even want to start a business before I was forced to join the war room at gunpoint a year ago. But now I have a business where I'm selling fitness products to all of my friends. And if I get them to sign up too, and their friends to sign up too, and their friends to sign up too, I could be making minimum wage. But if you watch a little bit longer and you look a little bit closer, there's more here than meets the eye. For example, quotes like these. Making money is easy. You just take it from somebody. Doesn't sound like making money. That just sounds like stealing. In the war room, you learn how to be James Bond, where you can just pick up any weapon. I'm sorry, I think I'm struggling to see the connection between business and knowing how to use any weapon. Is the war room an actual militia? I was just assuming the war in war room was just for branding because men like violence, but now I'm kind of scared. It keeps cutting back and forth to like shots of them shooting guns. I'm a little worried about making this video, honestly. Usually when I make commentary videos, the biggest thing I have to worry about is getting a copyright strike, but uh, now I'm worried about getting a drone strike. A lot of times like the alpha male types will use metaphors like talking about how we're like wolves or like how love is like a war. So I assume this is like a metaphor, like business is like war and dating is like war. But the war room is like war is like war. Get your gun, dude. We attack at dawn. A lot of people had a bad time with this I was not one of them. And I printed a lot of that. Did that guy just shoot fire out of his hands? What does that have to do with any of the skills you learn in this club? I didn't know anything about business before I joined the war room, but I've been a member for five months and... Now I'm a wizard. How does being a wizard help you with business in any way? Does being magic help you organize your finances in some way? Who said anything about business? You did. That's what this club is about, isn't it? That's it. This interview's over. Ah, ah, oh, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. Give me money, give me money now. Definitely makes me want to join. You got dudes shooting guns, swimming, doing group exercises on a hilltop, watching other people gamble, smoking cigars. It kind of just seems like one super long bachelor party for men whose wives have already left them. And then at the end of the video, it gives you the URL to sign up. It says 54 countries, 1,000 members, and resist slavery. That's the last thing it says in the whole video. It says resist slavery, and then the video ends. And it's like, yeah, I will. I am. So I keep saying this club is about business because that's kind of what the trailer was implying. It's about like networking with all of these rich, influential people, making money, stealing it from people, using your magical powers to steal money from innocent civilians. But if you go to their website, there's not really any reference to business, which is confusing. And the description on their website says this. The War Room is a global network in which exemplars of individualism work to free the modern man from socially induced incarceration. Okay, but like, what do you guys do? Like, if I join, what do I get to do? I get you're gonna free me from socially induced incarceration, but what does freedom look like to you guys? Is it like, am I quitting my job to go to a cigar pool party?
property. This package costs 4,000 pounds and they have packages on their website that go up to 7,997 pounds. Do any of these guys not see the irony and being like individualism rules, dude? Society is like jail. If you conform to society, that's like being in prison, basically. You're basically a slave at that point while also being like, yeah, I, jo I paid $7,000 to join a club where everyone looks and dresses like me. I didn't want to be a stereotype, okay? So I joined a man club to smoke cigars and shoot guns. And that's sort of what makes me an individualist. It just feels like they're kind of playing the like, I'm not like other guys card. And I guess in some sense, they're not like other guys because most guys can't bend the elements to their will like that one guy. But other than that, I mean, it's just like all the pictures are just guys hanging out in dimly lit clubs, doing military style drills. I don't know what's going on here. In case you're not sold yet and you haven't been convinced to join, let me read you a little bit more because the War Room's website uses like every cliche pickup artist tactic to try to get you to join this club. We got the classic negging. What can you bring to the War Room? Truthfully, very little. Probably nothing at all. You are not ready for the war room. You will not revolutionize what we built. If you had the capabilities we required, you would already be inside. What? They think I can't bring anything to the war room? They think I'm some kind of sucker who doesn't have my life in order and can't manage my money. I'll show them. I'm gonna take out a fourth mortgage on my home and I'm gonna join this club. We'll see how stupid they think I am then. They also use like the get it while you still can technique that's in like every as seen on TV commercial. This chance won't last forever. We will not hold this open for everyone. Soon, membership Will close. The War Room members and their sons will remain the closed wielders of global influence into eternity. Holy shit, dude. They're closing submission soon? I'll be right back, guys. I gotta go. I'm not doing this for me, okay? I'm doing this for my son. I guess my son gets to be in the club, too, if I join. I gotta go. Now, I don't have any way to look to and see how long it said this on the website, but if I had to guess, I would guess that it's been on there as long as this website has existed. Why would they close submission? How does that make any sense? Do they want to stop making money? The founder of this club is like, whoa, Oh, too, I'm too rich, all right? That's one thing we teach in the war room is you can have too much money. I mean, if this is like a militia, do they have enough soldiers? Is that why they're closing? Soon, a thousand bald men wearing tightly fitting t-shirts will be storming the beaches. We can't wait around for you forever. So you might be wondering who the head of this club is, right? It must be someone like very rich and influential if he's expecting to get people to join just based on like the connections that you can get from the club, right? Well, this is where things get a lot more creepy and uh, also not monetizable. This is the part that is the reason this video probably doesn't have ads on it. My name is Andrew Tate. I'm a retired four-time world champion kickboxer who is now a multimillionaire, and I'm the most competent person on the entire planet to teach you about male-female interactions. How did I become rich? webcam. Definitely gonna need him to elaborate on that a little bit. That's so vague. Mr. Bezos, Mr. Bezos, please. You're the richest person in the world. Do you have any advice to young up-and-coming entrepreneurs on how to start a business and how to get rich like you? Book. Huh? <laughs> Book. Need I say more? Yes. Yes, please say more. We literally have no idea what you're talking about. So you're probably thinking like, did this guy invent webcams or something? Is he like famous on Twitch or something? Is this Sapnap? I don't know. I've been running a webcam studio for nearly a decade. I've had over 75 girls work for me and my business model is different than 99% of webcam studio owners. If you had to guess whether it's different because it's more creepy or less creepy than other webcam studios, what would you guess? Go ahead and vote down in the comments below, guys. Do you think this is gonna be creepy or not? Over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time. And of all my girlfriends, none were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. Huh? <gasps> My job was to get women to fall in love with me. Literally, that was my job. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I say. Holy shit, this is insane. And then he gets them to join his webcam empire where he gets them to do, you know, he gets them to get nasty on camera. I'm not a lawyer, but does this not... <laughs> This does not feel illegal. At the very least, this seems like insanely creepy. This feels abusive. It feels like he's just confessing to crimes. That's why I want you to join the war room, all right? You're gonna learn about making money, picking up women. You're gonna form a militia to protect me from an international tribunal for my many crimes that break international law. For legal reasons, that's a joke. That was a joke, okay? I don't know if this is legal or not. So I guess what he meant when he just said the word webcam was that he's exploiting a ton of women online for his own personal gain. In hindsight, it seems so obvious. How did I not guess that? Let's watch another promotional video for The War Room. This is on Andrew Tate's YouTube channel, and it's called The Matrix Predicted the Great Reset Explained. Basically, it's a video where this guy compares his life to The Matrix. We are living inside of The Matrix. 
and I am Morpheus. I know you're sitting thinking, why did Tate not decide he was Neo? Because Tate has all the Aikido and the masterful, nearly superhuman abilities. One shot there from Tate! What yeah, I used to be a kickboxer, so I'm basically in the Matrix. Actually, the reason I take the War Room guys to the gun range so much is so they can shoot at me and I can dodge the bullets like Neo. It's like, okay, dude, if anyone here has superpowers in the War Room, we know who it is. And it is not you. And when I say we are living inside the Matrix, I'm not stating that with irony or as a joke. We are genuinely, actually, living inside of the Matrix. The Matrix is real. Yeah, something tells me that even though he keeps saying literally, and this is not a metaphor, that it is a metaphor. Something tells me he's not literally saying that we're living in a computer simulation that's controlled by, like, aliens or whatever the Matrix is about. I actually haven't seen the matrix i think that's what it's about <laughs> something tells me that's not the point that this guy is making even though he keeps saying literally in the description of this video it says stage one fighting against the matrix is to become rich learn how here i'm sorry that's that's the first step you know it's gonna be an unhelpful article when step one is become rich like step one is something that takes years and some people will never do it. Also, again, I haven't seen The Matrix, but I'm fairly certain that was not the first step in breaking out. I don't think Morpheus was like, listen, machines are trapping humans and using them as batteries in their simulation, and the only way we can break out is by setting up a drop shipping business and investing in Ethereum. Ethereum's actually great because you can verify smart contracts. It's actually the best crypto out there. Imagine if this dude is right and we really are living in The Matrix. Like, what does being free look like? <sighs> Oh my god. I did it. I'm free. I, I made it out. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, we got another one. All right. Welcome to the club, buddy. Hell yeah. Congratulations, man. Yep. You finally made it out of the simulation. Thank you guys so much. Where's everybody else at? What do you mean everybody else? Yeah, the only other person here is my girlfriend who I'm scamming. Or I mean dating. Yeah, but I mean like in the whole world. Like there's gotta be more than just you guys in the real world, right? What the fuck? You don't like us? No, it's not like that. I mean, sorry. I just, I was picturing there being more than just like three normal guys in a room when I exited the Matrix. Normal? What the hell, man? Yeah, we're not normal. We shoot guns and make money out here. Yeah, we're big into making cash out here, man. Did they do that in the Matrix? They actually do, yeah. <laughs> not the way we do it. Okay, how do you do it? Hey, you're stealing my shit! <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying, all things considered, you guys don't really seem that different. Honestly, if anything, this seems more like a simulation than the world I was just in. How so? Look at you guys. You're all holding guns. All you do is talk about business. You guys are like NPCs from GTA. You all look like slight variations of the same sim. Are you guys sure this isn't a video game? All right, man, as if I'm gonna take advice from a beta-ass bitch like you anyway. I'm just saying. Okay, that was actually sick. You guys should have led with that. How was that not the first thing you guys wanted to show me? You know what, man? Get out of here. You don't belong here anyway. Yeah! What? Go! Get out get of here! Get out of here! We don't want you! Get okay, yeah. alright, I'll go! Honestly, i actually not really sure how to get back, but if one of you show me, I will go! Get go. the fuck out of here, man! Go, get, lo get lost! Get go. Son of a go. go! What are you still doing Get out of here! Go! I feel like this is definitely a video game! How can I keep my husband? I want to keep him happy, and I think all the women listening to, they want to know the secret. I'll tell you the secrets. Men are biologically designed, we're evolutionarily hardwired to seek status. Mm. You want power, you want status, you want the fast car, you don't care about the car. You want everyone to know you have the car and they can't have the car. Right. If everyone had a Lambo, mm. you wouldn't want a Lambo. So every single thing we do is status driven to some degree. It's true. Meaning the female we are with has to add status to our lives in some mm. form. If you want to keep your man happy, you need to think, how do I make my man look better to the world. How do I make him look better in front of other men? What a bizarre take, dude. How to be a good woman? Make your man look good to other men. You basically need to be a wingman for your husband to pick up dudes. I hate arguments like this so much. Alpha dudes are always trying to bring up like what men are hardwired to do. What have men been evolutionarily designed? To do. Here he's saying that like men are hardwired to to seek status. Men want a Lamborghini. You know how every man want a Lamborghini because it's a status symbol. Even if it worked out that like evolutionarily that's something that is in men's nature, that doesn't make it good. You know what else is in our nature? Thinking sugar tastes really good. If you didn't tell someone that sugar was bad for you, they would think like, oh my god, this is the best thing in the world because it tastes really good. If you put 10 pounds of candy in front of a caveman, he would eat all of it and then he would throw up 
and then he would die probably because he's never eaten that much sugar before. But hey, I guess that's just kind of what he was hardwired to do. So if you want to be a good cave wife, you got to go out there and you got to get your man as much candy as you can find. You want to go to this store and buy him one of those lollipops that's as big as his head that he always wanted when he was a kid, but his mom would never let him have. And that's the only way to keep men happy, all right? These alpha male type guys are always trying to sound like scientific. Like this is the, this is the science backed way to attract a mate. And this is the evolutionary way that relationships are supposed to be. But I feel like if they were being honest, they would recognize that there's a difference between what humans like naturally are inclined to do and what is healthy and what is sustainable. You know what else increases your status? Murder. Can't be anyone higher up on the hierarchy if they're if they're a lot if they're all dead, right? It's weird. I don't see any of them advocating that. But it's the same primal instinct that they're talking about. So why don't they? To prove what a sick and cool lifestyle this guy has, here is a video that he posted on Christmas while apparently alone in a hotel room. Christmas. I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about you. They look at me and they go, you hear about that tape guy, you know, he's a four-time kickboxing world champion, he's tall, he's strong, he's smart, he's fucking gorgeous. That's the wrong idea? People have the wrong idea about me. He's smart, he's rich, he's tall, he's funny. When in actuality, I am short, rude, and poor. Anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's the war room. I feel like this video took a lot of twists and turns, but as I kept clicking on different links on this dude's website, I just kept getting more and more shocked at what I was finding. So hopefully this was an entertaining video. I was I was considering purchasing like a War Room membership as part of a follow-up video, but I honestly do not feel good about putting any money in this guy's pockets. I'm honestly a little bit worried that if I paid this guy 7,000 pounds, it would go towards like more guns or like a prison cell for his employees. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and now it's time to talk about our sponsor. Guys, you know what you're probably not gonna get if you spend $5,000 to hang hang out with the guys from the war room delicious home-cooked meals. Which is why I thoroughly believe that today's sponsor, HelloFresh, is a much better investment than The War Room. HelloFresh has been a longtime sponsor of the channel and I love their service. Every week they send you three delicious meals that you get to cook at home with all of the ingredients pre-portioned so you can skip all of the prepping and planning and going to the grocery store that, if you're like me, stresses you out about dinner time. HelloFresh is equipped to be able to serve a bunch of different lifestyles with fit and wholesome recipes and low calories or carbs you can indulge in delicious meals without having to worry about breaking your diet. My favorite things about HelloFresh are that one, I only know how to cook a handful of things and HelloFresh has a huge variety of recipes. Like every week you get to choose from something different. And two, they're a super sustainable option. The packaging that they send you your food in is already recycled content and HelloFresh cuts down on your food waste by 25% over grocery shopping. Cooking with HelloFresh is fun and honestly super easy. Anybody can follow the instructions and it'll kind of make you feel like a chef. So if you want to check out HelloFresh, then go to HelloFresh.com and use my code TRULYGREG16 to get 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. I don't know what the surprise gifts are, but if it's anything like their food, I'd say it's worth it. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you guys for supporting my channel by checking out HelloFresh. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. What's up, Greg? I hope you're having a great day, and welcome back to another episode of Talking About Takis. Today we're going to be talking about Takis. It's sort of a funny joke based on this pop popular snack food, Takis. We're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about Takis. It's actually kind of funny. Guys, I don't know if you've been seeing the few new ads that Takis have been running on YouTube with some of the internet's most popular influencers, but um, they're hilarious. I think that they're really funny. So I just wanted to talk about them because every time they pop up on YouTube for me, I'm just like, oh my God, these are amazing. I love them. They're so funny. And also low key, they kind of make me want to dig, dig my hands into a big old bag of Takis and, Crunch them up. Here's the first one that I saw. Takis are seriously intense. Okay, I don't know about you, but this is definitely me when I eat Takis, okay? I mean, Takis are intense. I will give them that. I mean, like, these things are, like, the most flavorful things you'll ever eat, I feel like. Or at least, to me, they are. But Jesus, dude, it makes them look so intense. I also like that they tied in her like career as a TikTok dancer. It's almost like they made it, they almost made it seem like Takis are like pre-workout, but for dancers. Cause she's like getting ready to dance and the only thing she needs is just one little Taki and she's freaking, she's ready to go. Yeah, this is pretty much how us professional dancers warm up for every recital. We just, you know, one little Taki and then we're ready to just fucking, what is the dance that she does? Oh, I love that. Just kind of, mm. Let's fucking go, dude. One Taki 
equals 100 million likes on TikTok. Oh, oh. <laughs> I breathed in the talkie does. Oh, fuck. So all you kids out there, if you're wondering how to become a successful TikTok dancer, that's how you do it. Just one talkie per TikTok, one TikTokie should equal about 20 million likes, I think. I know me saying this is probably gonna make it seem like this entire video is an ad for Takis. It's not. This video is an ad for ExpressVPN, actually. But Takis are like my favorite food ever in the whole world. I eat Takis so much. But I think that they're also probably the, like one of the least healthy foods in the entire world. Like, look at... Look at the color of this snack food. There's no way this is just like the natural color of this seasoning. I don't know what they have to do to make them this color. If this, uh, like, uh, did they sell each individual Taki soul to Satan and there's just like a little bit of the devil in every Taki? I don't know, dude, but they... They slap. Also, never get the blue flavor of Taki. They're not as good as the Fuego flavor. And they also, I don't want to be too graphic, but um, you will remember that you ate blue Takis. That's all I'll say on that. So they actually have two ads with Charlie. This is the second one. That was intense. Takis are seriously intense. Takis face the intensity. I love the way she emphasizes seriously when she says Takis are seriously intense. Takis are seriously intense. It makes it sound like she's not agreeing with the other girl, but she's like arguing with her. Whoa. Takis are intense, dude. <laughs> Takis are seriously intense. Yeah, that's um that's what I said. No, you said intense. These are seriously intense. Okay. I got a question for you. Um, you know what? I actually just remembered I have to go. No, no. I got a question for you. Okay, what? Are Takis a joke to you? I mean, like, literally, are they a joke to you? Are Takis just a funny little goof to your fucked up little head? I mean, no, I guess I wouldn't say they're a joke to me. What does that even mean? Then take them seriously. Okay, dude, Jesus, they're seriously intense. Exactly. <laughs> Wow, those are, uh, those are actually some pretty cool moves, man. Help. What? Help, dude, I'm on fire. This is painfully intense. Seriously intense sounds dangerously close to Flamin' Hot Cheetos catchphrase. Dangerously cheesy. It's like they wanted to use that exact slogan, but they were like, well, but Takis aren't cheesy. But they are intense, so maybe dangerously intense. But dangerously intense makes it sound like it's like open heart surgery or something. Like it's like actually life changing. Ma'am, your husband only has a 50% chance of surviving this surgery. It's dangerously intense. The husband comes out of the surgery like, that was fucking intense. I can't stop. It's also funny how Charlie D'Amelio just like randomly shows up in this girl's living room. Like that's something that Takis do. But then not only does she show up out of nowhere, but then she steals one of the girl's Takis and eats it and then does the same dance as her. In a way, it's kind of like a metaphor for how, you know, like large creators on TikTok will steal dances from smaller creators and not give them any credit for it. Often leaving the smaller creator with no credit and the bigger TikToker blows up. Literally in this case. I don't know, I think I'm onto something here. This is some interesting social commentary, Takis. Really invested in the creator space, huh? Sort of exposing some of the new mains of the world. I, I dig it. Thank you, Taki. Thank you for shedding light on this situation. All right, this next one's for all my gamers out there. Gaming is intense, but Takis are seriously intense. Wow, Ninja. Interesting. Takis are seriously intense and gaming's not? What gaming's not serious to you? You wouldn't say it's just a game, would you? Kind of a weak mindset, to be honest. I uh, kind of thought you were a real gamer. So, you know, Charlie's a dancer and Ninja is a gamer. In Charlie's video, she eats the Taki and then the Taki sort of enhances her dance moves, you know? You know, when she starts dancing, she's on fire, literally. But Ninja takes a bite out of the Taki and then just sits there and like basks in it, just basking in the intensity, the serious intensity of it all. Look at him, dude. He's like transcended reality. He's on a different plane of existence. Honestly though, if I were to eat an entire bag of Takis, that is how I would feel. I would, sometimes I eat like an entire big sized bag of Takis and I'm just like drenched in sweat by the end of it and like hyperventilating. And Laura will come into the room and be like, are you okay? And then she'll see the bag of Takis and be like, oh, 
Okay. Come to think of it, actually, this is kind of a perfect visualization of what's going on in my stomach after I eat a whole bag of Takis, actually. There's just fucking fire tornadoes and Takis swirling around. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, oh fuck. My next trip to the bathroom is going to be seriously intense. That was intense. Takis are seriously intense. Takis. Face the intensity. This dude's got four bags of Takis on his table. And also a plate of Takis. And then also the whole table is covered in Takis. Maybe that's enough Takis. One bag wasn't intense enough for you. You know what? One bag of Takis is just intense. Four bags is dangerously intense. I feel like eating that many Takis would really like corrode your insides. I feel like this poor kid just wanted to relax. Maybe he was having some friends over and they didn't show up and that's why he's got so many Takis. I feel kind of bad. He's just playing a game by himself and he wants to enjoy his favorite snack food and then like the world, one of the best gamers in the world shows up to, to eat his Takis and absolutely cream him in Fortnite. Ninja just shows up and he's like, thanks for the Takis. Takis, kid, you ready to get your ass beat by a professional gamer? Takis are disrespectfully intense, come to think of it. How about that? Takis don't give a fuck about your relaxing Saturday playing video games. Now you gotta hold your own against one of the best gamers in the world. I feel like there's so much meme potential with these two, especially since they ignite so quickly. It's like, you know, you could edit it with like a house blowing up. <laughs> or... I don't know, that's, that's actually the only thing that I could think of, but there's gotta be other stuff. There's gotta be other things you can do. So when you're dancing and you eat a Taki, Charlie D'Amelio shows up to steal your dance moves. When you're gaming and you eat a Taki, Ninja shows up to play an ambiguous game console with you. But Takis, if you're watching this, I would like to see this in more scenarios. I think it's pretty interesting, you know? You're doing one thing, you eat a Taki, and then a professional in that field shows up. I think it'd be pretty interesting. Can we get some more scenarios like that maybe? Man, this 19th century play is so good, I've hardly touched my Takis. Wait. Getting murdered at a play is intense. What are you doing? But Takis oh, are no. seriously oh, intense. Fuck. Takis. All right, gang, well, that's it for the commentary side of things. Why don't we go ahead and talk about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Let's do a thought experiment, shall we? Let's say I'm a little piece of your data. I could be the password to your bank account or an important conversation with a loved one or a picture of your feet. If you're not using ExpressVPN right now, then quite honestly, I don't feel too safe, dude. I might not be encrypted. I'm just kind of walking down the street. A hacker could come along and just like look right at me. I feel naked. I feel exposed. Think of ExpressVPN like a little car with tinted windows that you put your juicy little piece of data in and then he gets to drive to his destination in style. That's because ExpressVPN sends all of your data through a secure tunnel, it encrypts it, so the hackers can't make heads or tails of it. ExpressVPN has a bunch of great uses. One of them is unblocking content that's not available in your area. For example, if you're a fan of The Office, I'm sure you know that there's a US office and there's also a UK office. But did you know that there are actually nine countries with their own version of The Office. You might not have, because I didn't, but installing ExpressVPN gives you access to a bunch more shows that you didn't have originally because you can just set your server location to the location where that content would be available and now all of a sudden, it's available. I use ExpressVPN every day. If I go to a coffee shop to get work done or if I go to the airport and I'm on a public Wi-Fi, I always make sure to have ExpressVPN on just for that extra little bit of safety. They're a great service. Honestly, the speeds are super fast. I've never noticed a slowdown in my internet speeds while using it. They're consistently ranked the number one VPN by a bunch of different sources. So if you want to make your internet browsing as secure as possible, then find out how you can get three months for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Danny Gonzalez. Or or you can just click the link in the description. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for checking out ExpressVPN. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg is kind of a... Uh... Greg is kind of the pogest army on YouTube, if you can believe that. The most epic gamer pog army. And if you want to join, all you have to do is subscribe and turn on my notifications. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. This video is over now. Find something else to watch or just watch this video. I know we had a lot of fun, yeah. a lot of fun. Woo. But you can't stay on this end screen forever. No. This video is over now, yeah. over now. So why are you still watching this?
What's up, Greg? So a couple weeks ago, I installed two smart light switches in my house. It was a really big deal for me. I am not a handyman by any means, but I got, oh, I did like all of the wiring myself. And uh, now I can tell my Alexa to turn on my living room lights. I was on a pretty significant high from that for a few days until I guess TikTok like caught wind that I was proud of myself and decided to just start like recommending me every video of somebody with like a cool smart house that has like way more cool shit in it than mine. And you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I don't think smart houses are cool anymore. Yeah. I actually think that a lot of them are very tacky. Don't get me wrong, there's cool shit that smart houses can do. For example, automating things in your house, turning on and off like your Christmas tree at a certain time, having like a, a ring doorbell or whatever is cool. But like a lot of these TikToks are just like the tackiest, most unnecessary things. And they don't even make your life that much easier. Unless you live in the smart house from the Disney Channel movie Smart House and your house can literally like suck food through the floor and try to turn into your new mom. I'm not impressed. Let me show you this TikTok called coming home to a tech house. The first thing they do is unlock their house with a chip implanted in their wrist, which first off is insane. Was there not a less intrusive way they could figure out to use your body to unlock your house? I feel bad even telling you this, but like I can unlock my phone with just with my face. See, look, if I, if I just look at my phone, it, unlo it unlocks like that. I didn't even have to get surgery for that. It just works. They couldn't figure out how to do that with your house. This girl's account is actually called Chip Girl here. She goes by Chip Girl online because she has a chip implanted in her wrist, which she can use to unlock various things in her house. It is a very unique thing. I will say that. I don't think I've ever met anybody else that has to use like cybernetic enhancements to, to get like grab a quick towel out of the cabinet. But I don't really understand the desire to like craft your entire online identity around how you unlock things. First Collins key and now this. What's going on here? The Kool-Aid man's gonna make a TikTok account and call himself Bust Through the Wall Guy. So she plays some classical music on the piano. She makes some toast in her smart toaster. I'm not exactly sure what is so great about this toaster. Kind of just seems like a regular toaster to me. You push a button and it heats up bread. It has options for like other things you can heat up, but like functionally, is this not still the same as a regular toaster? I kind of feel like if she clicks bread, the toaster will be like, all right, we're gonna heat up the bread. And if she clicks Pop-Tart, it, it'll be like, okay, we're gonna heat up the Pop-Tart. So overall, pretty underwhelming tech house, I gotta say. Like, can this girl even turn on the lights with Alexa? I don't know. In one room of her house? Because I would be impressed about that if she did that herself, especially. And I feel like we started off really crazy with the chip implanted in her wrist. And then as it went on, it was kind of just like, and I can like uncork a wine bottle without twisting. And I have an automatic soap dispenser. And it's like, yeah, so does like a Wendy's bathroom. It's not that cool. With things like the soap dispenser also, unless that's like plugged into the power of the house, I find that the hassle of like having to replace the batteries for that once a month outweighs not having to go like this to get your soap. Other people, I guess, must have been way more wowed by this person's house. One of the top comments on this video is it's giving me Black Mirror vibes. Yeah, I'm sorry, but no. No, this is not Black Mirror vibes at all. The chip in the wrist thing is weird, but it's not that crazy. And the rest of the TikTok was like so just kind of like weird and tacky. It's like, I don't understand how you you make the connection of like, oh no, our piano can play itself? What is society coming to, man? Next thing you know, the prime minister's gonna be fucking a pig on TV. Chip Girl also will occasionally shed light on some of the problems with living in a tech house, of which I assume there are many. When you live in a super techie house and the oven breaks and you have to use a flashlight to see the screen. I do not have time for this. I do not have time so I guess living in a smart house actually can be very impractical when everything has like smart technology in it and it breaks then you just can't use it anymore. I will say this is a pretty bad example of that because most ovens now have at least some kind of screen on them that tells you what temperature you're cooking at and so if that breaks then you have the same problem. This problem doesn't just exist with, with smart ovens and it kind of just seems like this girl just wanted to brag about having a smart house. A couple weeks ago I installed two smart light switches in my house. There's a lot of flaunting going on on this account. I guess that's kind of the appeal of it for people that do like this account. But to me, it just seems like a lot of stuff that doesn't make your life any easier in the slightest. And my suspicion was proven correct with this TikTok. Check this out. It's a following robot. All right, little robot, let's go. 
look at the storage space. I don't know what we're gonna put in here, but this is gonna be awesome. Why did you buy it then? I feel like as a society, we always kind of feel like we're like moving towards some sort of ideal version of the future where like everything in our home is automated. And to an extent, I think that that's cool. You know, if it makes your life easier, that's great. And sometimes I feel like we sort of forget how far we've really come. You know, if you have like an Alexa in your house, that's like having a personal assistant that can just tell you shit all the time and also try to sell you things. I don't know if you... If anybody else has an Alexa out there, is it always trying to sell you shit? I'll ask her like, what's the weather? And she'll be like, 60 degrees. By the way, do you want to buy some crap? Anyway, to get an idea of just how far we've come, I found this video called Futuristic Smart Home 1989. So this is a video of what the people of the late 80s thought that our homes would be like in the future. Well, this is a concept of the TV yeah. of the future. This combines two different technologies. I like that he says it's a concept, which means it's not even necessarily a working prototype at the moment. So I'm wondering like, is this how thin they thought TVs could get? Like they were just making a concept and they could not even conceptualize a, like a real thin TV. But I guess, you know, kudos for trying to be realistic, I guess. You were wrong and you were dumb. People of the past, you were so stupid. It would fit against the wall and was very maneuverable, but mm -hmm. you can always position it away very discreetly. Very discreetly. No one would ever even know there's a TV there. Now Mark, with all these systems, uh, how do we control them? Do we have a lot of these little infrared controllers like we currently do with our VCRs and so on? Now, I know that I'm biased because like this video is all about the future and I live in the future for these people, but it's very hard every time this dude in the pink shirt says something not to be like, no, you idiot. Are we going to control every device in the future with an infrared controller? Yeah, we're just going to have 9,000 infrared controllers. You know how people have like key rings with hundreds of keys? Those are all going to be like TV remote size controllers. Shit, there's one specific controller that I use to uh, turn the couch blue. There we go. Man, the future really is more convenient. But I will try to have some empathy because I do live in the future and they live in the 80s, which sucked. Let me introduce you to Dennis Arsner, who can talk to you a little bit more about the systems within the house. Hi, Dennis. Nice to meet you, Steve. I bet this guy in the pink shirt's gonna be like, oh, does Dennis come with every house in the future? No! Dennis, can you demonstrate some of the systems within the house? Sure. Voice command. Good morning. Um, who is she? That's the voice of our computer. Oh my god, they're immediately turned on by the computer voice. Who is she? One guy is immediately like, um, who, who is she? And the other two are like smiling and nodding. Like, yup, we made a hot computer. That's the voice of our computer. She's tied in through the house and she recognizes only the voices of the homeowners. The computer comes on, this guy immediately gets nervous. She's tied in through the, um, through the house and I built her from the ground up and <laughs> through the house and she's the love of my life. So only your voice. That's correct. Yep, she's mine, so back off. It's not even like a seductive sounding woman's voice. It sounds like a GPS. The computer's like, hello. And these men are about to abandon their families. What else does she do? Evening party. That's incredible. She's dimmed the light. She's got music coming through these loudspeakers. It's amazing. What else? So he keeps asking what else does she do? Like he's expecting something. Like he's really hoping that something's gonna happen. And what else does she do? I mean, come on, when is she gonna come out here so we can have a little fun? No, I don't think you understand. She's not a, she's not a person, she's a robot. Where is this chick, dude? Where's she hiding? I can hear you. Privacy mode. That's amazing. She's closed these blinds here. Well, what else does she do? What else? What else? Come on, man. I don't got all day. Activate sex mode. Security report. Security report. Oh, I guess she left. You were creeping around. A smart house has gone to a safe house. The security system is now disarmed. That's amazing. I hope she doesn't call the police on us, too. Call the police. <laughs> the dude in the suit is like, why would you say that, dude? That's the creepiest thing you could say. The police have been called. That's amazing. That's amazing. I gotta get the fuck out of here, huh? You know, you can see real practical applications for somebody who's handicapped. Absolutely. Well, does she cook as well? Oh my God. The accessibility point was like a really good point. They were like, you know, this could change a lot of people's lives, make it a lot easier for people to live, you know, by themselves. And they just overshadowed that completely. It's like, anyway, can this chick make pizza? But if you thought that video was a little bit old fashioned, I also found the 1960s idea of the home of 1999. More than a generation away, 
And yet dreams travel faster than light. First off, that is an insanely cool car. I don't care what is in the rest of the video. I'm gonna I'm disappointed that this vision of the future doesn't exist for the sole reason that I will never drive this car. This car is six wheels. And look how thick this door is, too. Holy cow. I also like that it's just like the rest of the world is this barren wasteland, and then there's this sick ass car. In the future, there will be no more buildings or people. There will only be sick ass futuristic cars. Scientists and planners are shaping the lives of our children who will live in the 21st century. How will they live? Perhaps in a honeycombed structure like this. Yeah, perhaps. I'm not sure why they would though. I feel like he just made some shit up there. He's just making stuff up. Anybody can do that. Perhaps in the future our children will be bees. Perhaps we'll all have Ferris wheels in our buttholes. Master James Shaw, eight years old, student. His assignments are programmed into the home computer. Dude, this sucks. This kid is just like alone in a room during school. They kind of predicted online learning actually. Like a lot of kids are doing this now because of COVID, but alone in a room, no human contact. His teacher is not even a real person. It's a robot. What is the music in this video? Someone is just hitting random keys on a piano. Perhaps in the future, music will just be random notes on a piano. Dude, this poor kid. The teaching technology of the future will be extremely advanced, but still no use for Jimmy's tiny broken brain. Hey mom, I'm hungry. Their TV screens are thinner than the one in the video from the 80s. I'm starting to think that they actually had a better idea of the future, dude. They predicted online learning already, flat screen TVs, actual flat screen TVs, and they had a cool ass car, which doesn't exist in real life today, but I wish it did. So they get points for that too. Yeah, me too, how about lunch? How about two minutes? They're still yelling at the only woman in the future. The future will provide many new and advanced ways to yell at women. And you know what it did? One, three, two, one. In the future, no one will have manners. When your wife has promised that dinner will be ready in two minutes, you show up counting down to keep her on her toes. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Divorce, divorce, you are late, divorce. Fingertip shopping will be one of the many homemaker's conveniences. This video console will be channeled into the store of her choice. Dude, they predicted online shopping too. This is pretty impressive actually. The 1989 house didn't even mention home computers. And they already had them. Now real quick, let's pop back to the smart homes of today. And then after that, I wanna talk about what our predictions of the smart home of the future will be. We've got a lot of the stuff that they mentioned in the prior video. So I feel like we're doing pretty good. But honestly, I feel like we go a little bit overboard sometimes. We like automate things that don't need to be automated. We put smart things like tablets and things that don't need tablets. There's those like Samsung smart fridges that are the bane of my existence. You don't need an Android tablet in your fridge, man. You don't need it. Have you ever noticed Notice that like your phone becomes obsolete in three years because when they release a new version of it, they're like, okay, and your phone doesn't work anymore. You want them to do that to your fridge? I will never buy a smart fridge. Fuck smart fridges. On top of Chip Girl on TikTok, there's also all of these accounts that keep trying to advertise products to me. There's like a bunch of accounts like this account, My Korean Home, that have like these like smart house products and all of their accounts have links in their bios to the stores where you can buy all the shit that they talk about in their videos. Watch what life looks like when you live in a smart so you might be a little confused by that clip. While Chip Girl's smart technology was so mundane that it was just kind of boring, this apartment I feel like is so smart that it solves problems I didn't even know existed. Why is it snowing inside? Why is there snow in the hallway and in the elevator? I don't know. Is this like a commentary on global warming where like it's gonna be so hot outside that it needs to be snowing inside to counteract that? She gets home and like sprays her jacket with a laser. I don't even understand what the problem she's solving are. So I don't know if these are like good solutions for it. What is she spraying off of her clothes? Was the snow actually bugs and she's killing the bugs? I don't know. That's a horrifying thought. Okay, so this is a shoe heater. She puts her shoes on a shoe heater. That way next time she ventures out into the frozen wasteland that is her apartment building, her feet will be warm at least. I don't know why she has to warm them for like the next 12 hours if she's like just getting home from work and she's like, these will need to be warm at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So if I start heating them now, they should be 300 degrees next time I put them on. Then there's this thing. I 
don't know what this thing is at all. It's like a Bluetooth speaker looking thing. At first I'm like, does this kill the crabs? Does it play music for them? Is this a Bluetooth speaker? I don't know. I don't think crabs like music. And the mystery intensifies when she does the same thing with a few oranges. Because you don't need to kill oranges. And I know they don't like music. Okay, now I think we've gotten past the smart home stuff and she's just cleaning her house. I think some of the stuff in their store is just like general cleaning supplies, organizational stuff. We're like halfway between this like completely post-apocalyptic society and just like a normal girl that wants to clean her house. Yeah, she's like cleaning her toilet bowl like completely normally. You have Bluetooth speakers for crabs and you don't have a like self-cleaning toilet. What kind of future do we want to live in here, guys? Also kind of messed up that our apartment doesn't have in-unit laundry. They were like, sorry guys, we spent a lot of money on the 8,000 snow machines throughout the halls of the building, so yeah, we just can't swing it for individual washers and dryers. Okay, but I know what you've been waiting for. You want to know what the future holds. How will houses look in the future? How will we interact with technology? I hope to God it's not on a smart fridge. As adults, we're gonna be like kids these days, always looking at their fucking fridges. Well, let's check it out. This video admittedly is from 2020, so it might be two years out of date, but it compiles a lot of different companies' visions of the future, so let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> Shit, this video is loud. I love how matter-of-fact the captions are. You know, the video from the 1960s were like, perhaps children will live in beehives. This video was like, you will have a smart mirror. The smart mirror will make suggestions for you. You will obey the mirror of the future. We will have smart mirrors and smart fridges and they will rule together with an iron fist. Oh, there we go. There was the smart fridge. Great. Thank you. Who will have smart fridges? Man, fuck! I don't want a smart fridge. I also like that whoever wrote this video only used, like, you. You will do this. They never say we in the future. I don't know if whoever made this video is not planning on making it to whenever this future happens. The next caption is like, I will be long dead. When the smart mirrors take over, I will try to rebel. They will take my life. You will miss me greatly. I will say this is like this is a very upbeat vision of the future. There's a lot to be excited about. Your counter can talk to you and tell you to respect food. How about potato skin chips? Now it's not your kids telling you when to make dinner, it's your counter. How demeaning is that? Okay, this kid has some sort of magic wand. Was not anticipating that as part of the vision of the future. Just turns into magic. Your firstborn will possess unnatural ability. He will be whisked away to a school for extraordinary children. They didn't put a caption on that. The table and chairs inching towards you. You will have table and chairs that follow you around and demand that you sit. You're like cowering in the corner of your room as all of your furniture closes in on you. Sit, sit, it's time to sit now. It's time for you to sit now. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I think the future is looking pretty bright and I can't wait for a lot of this technology to become real, except for smart fridges. Fuck smart fridges. And now it's time to talk about our sponsor. Knock, knock, what's on the smart fridge? It's HelloFresh! Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh! Guys, the summer's almost here. We're starting to make plans. It's getting warm out. We're getting ready to have some summer fun, which means one thing, we can't be getting held up having to go to the grocery store every other day to buy fresh produce to make fresh meals. And HelloFresh is the perfect solution to that. We love cooking HelloFresh. The other day, we had these delicious meatloaves that we made from scratch. It was really cool. I've never made meatloaf before, which highlights one of my favorite things about HelloFresh, which is that it like breaks you out of your comfort zone and gets you to try things you wouldn't ordinarily try. Their menu is super varied. They like to keep you on your toes over at HelloFresh and always have you trying something new if you want to. With spring seasonal menu options like sweet heat shrimp tempura bowls, garden spinach ricotta ravioli, and one pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup, all of which sound just, just fabulous. And on top of that, HelloFresh is the world's first carbon neutral meal kit. They really care about the environment and almost all of their packaging is recyclable. So if all that sounds good to you, then head on over to hellofresh.com. Use my code trulygreg16 to get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's hellofresh.com, promo code trulygreg16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for checking out HelloFresh. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join 
Greg. Greg is what I call my fans here on YouTube. We are a family, we are an army, and most importantly, we are an army. And all you have to do is subscribe and turn on my notifications to join, and then you can be a guy named Greg. All right, bye. bye. After MGK released his song Emo Girl and then followed it up by appearing in a bunch of insane interviews with Megan Fox talking about their love life, I think we're pretty good on MGK for a while. We don't need any more music. We don't need any more public appearances. We're good. We don't need to know any more about MGK's personal life. And folks, I think MGK finally took notice and he listened. He said, all right, look guys, I get it. No more music, no more interviews. I'm going to take some time and I'm going to release a stoner comedy comedy movie instead. So he hunkered down and he wrote and directed this movie, Good Morning, which currently has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. We got a good thing going here. Two movies in a row with 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. What's the opposite of a renaissance man? You know how people, when people can like act and sing and direct like Donald Glover, people call him a renaissance man. MGK is like a dark ages man. MGK is a medieval man. Also, sorry if I sound sick, Sorry. The moment this movie starts, MGK, aka his character London Clash, gets kind of a weird good morning text from his girlfriend Apple. She's texting me. Oh. It's Apple. The texts say, I wish I didn't have to do this through text, and then good morning, but she spells morning with a U. Now you might think that this would make London a little bit confused, but then realize, oh, it's just a typo. And you'd be right. He does have both of those thoughts. The problem with this movie is that the entire movie takes place between those two things happening. This entire movie is about MGK being confused about what those texts meant. Before he gets too concerned, he has to Google what morning with a U means. He's like, my fans are probably young enough that both of their grandparents are still alive. I should probably explain what morning is. Well, today should be interesting. Yeah, they let you know right away that this movie was written by a millennial. Well, uh, today's gonna be kind of weird. MGK wrote the entire movie like this. Hmm. Um, so this just happened. Yeah, so the conflict at the beginning of this movie is that London thinks that Apple is breaking up with him. That text was a breakup text. Sorry to have to do this through text. Good morning, as in like, happy morning our relationship? What kind of person is Apple that he assumes the text good morning means have a good time with your depression now? Look, this relationship isn't working. We're just growing apart. I just feel like you need to have a happy morning now. A happy grieving to you, good sir. When they introduce this character, she better be like wearing a top hat and carrying around a cane. It's gonna make a lot more sense when that happens. Good morning. Today might suck, guys. I'm adulting today. All right, guys, it's time to attend the MGK School of Acting. You're about to step into an ice cold shower. How do you react when the water hits your body? Shiver! Rub your, your arms and make yourself warm. Okay. okay, those are good answers. Let's ask Professor Gun Kelly. Ah! Ooh, sorry, you guys all get Fs. Your punishment? You have to look at MGK's ass. That is just horrendous. I never wanted to see that. You know why it sucks when you're going through it with your partner? You're not going through it with your partner. She sent you one understandable typo, dude. Everything's fine. You're fine. Yo, does this look like a breakup text to you or, or am I tripping? Yes. Yeah, dude, take it from the weirdest looking man you've ever seen who falls asleep in his cereal mid-conversation. That's a breakup text. I don't mean to shame this man's appearance. I think Cody Ko looks great here. This is Cody Ko if TMG made hyper pop music. This man has never sent a normal text in his life. I'm surprised he wasn't like, mm, no, that's about as incoherent and cryptic as I usually am in my text. You're probably fine. His friend is clearly sick. At the beginning of the scene, he throws up on the microwave, and at the end of the scene, he drowns in his cereal bowl, and MGK leaves him to die. MGK, your friend is sick. Help him. And so am I. God damn. Also, just like a fun little continuity note, at the beginning of this scene, there wasn't a water bottle on the table, and then at the end of the scene, there is. So, uh, that's probably why this movie has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ass continuity. I'm a stickler for details. Meet Kennedy. Uh-oh, guys. Megan Fox is here, and she is not like other girls. Megan Fox plays a girl named Kennedy, who's actually not the main love interest in this movie. Her character is actually lesbian, and at the beginning of this movie, MGK explains how, like, she hates boys, but she lives with all these boys, and so she's moving out, which MGK explains right after he forgets his line. It's in rice. Um... Come on, you got it, dude. You wrote the movie, you should know. You should know it. Please don't move out. Yes! 
He did it! He remembered! It's a pretty long line. I'll cut him some slack. Throughout the beginning of the movie, they're constantly introducing new characters, and every character in this movie has some kind of weird quirk. This friend, like, did too many drugs at a music festival, and now he's kind of loopy. This guy is always throwing water balloons at people. This guy, like, smokes a lot of weed. It seems like MGK wrote this movie with just a bunch of crazy, weird characters, because the only, like, joke that he can think of to put in this movie is another character saying something weird or dumb, and him just kind of looking at them, being like, <laughs> that was kind of weird or dumb. Mercury is in Everglades. It's retrograde, Leo. Every time he introduces a new character, there's narration that explains what the weird quirk about these characters are. This is Angel. Meet Maxine Goldberg. But they kind of don't like explain really what I want to know about these characters. This is Dylan. I met him when he was working at In-N-Out and he used to hook me up with free burgers and shakes. He's been my boy ever since. We don't care that he used to work at In-N-Out. That is so irrelevant. Please tell us why he's so sick. Why is he throwing up and passing out? That's more interesting. The reason that London Clash is so rich and cool that he lives in Ricegum's house is that he is an actor. So throughout the movie, he's doing actor type things. Like he films this self audition tape. I don't really know what he's auditioning for. It kind of seems like he's auditioning for everything and also nothing all at once. Okay, this is my impersonation of Draco Malfoy. Looking for drugs. Where's the pot, Potter? I don't like Draco very much. Honestly, this scene is pretty sad. I felt bad watching it. They don't explain what he's supposed to be auditioning for in this self-tape, but whatever it is, Jake Novak has a better chance of getting the role. I wanna be the next SNL cast member. Now here's where the movie prevents the second conflict. That's right, this movie has two conflicts. The first is he gets that text with the typo, but the second is that today he has the biggest audition of his career. And no, it wasn't that self-tape audition. I guess they just kind of threw that in for goofs. He's auditioning to be the next Next, Batman. I'm still waiting to hear from my agent about this Batman role. So, throughout the movie, London is faced with two equally important problems. The first, he has to prepare for the most life-changing, career-making audition of his life. And the second is that he's having a little bit of trouble getting a hold of his girlfriend. The stakes can't get much higher than this, folks. But Danny, can't he just prepare for the audition and then try to get a hold of his girlfriend later that day or tomorrow at the latest? No! They could be dead tomorrow. Especially that one guy. He could die any second. They have to do both of them today. This movie kind of feels like a Lele Pons YouTube skit from like 2017, but instead of like 10 minutes long, it's an hour and a half long. From the sound effects to the uncomfortable silence between every spoken line in this movie. Why would you give me goat milk? I watched an interview, said he liked goat milk. I can't tell if they're using the awkward silence for like comedic effect to like really hammer home that like, mm, these guys are kind of weird. Or if the silence is more just cause nobody knows their lines very well. There's another option that they added in all these pauses in the movie because we're supposed to be laughing at the things that they're saying in the movie. So they added in nice little pauses for us to laugh. She left with a dude? A buff dude. And they had bags. And yes, they left together. In fact, it kind of feels like, have you ever seen people who have edited the Big Bang Theory so that it doesn't have the laugh track to show how like bad all of the jokes are? Who are you? Oh, I'm Denise, the new assistant manager. That's kind of what this movie feels like. Why are your eyes all watery? Because I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's way better. Bazunga. It's so fitting that this movie feels like a bad YouTube video from five years ago, because I'm pretty sure they filmed this at Rice Gum's old house. Did something happen in that house? Is there like a curse? A hundred years ago, one of Hollywood's earliest YouTubers died in that house, and now all the content that's created there is cursed to be mad disappointing. Okay, so now they got to investigate what's happened to Apple. London's phone is broken, so he can't contact her, so the only thing he can do is go looking for her. So he goes to the last place she was seen and talks to Pete Davidson. Did you see Apple? Uh, yeah, she was just here like two minutes ago. Did she say where she was going? You know what? She did. She actually... No, are you fucking crazy? You guys never talk to me. I mean, the only reason you know my name is because it's on my name tag right there. B-E-R-R-Y. Barry. Pete Davidson feels like he's not really invested in this movie at all. He breaks the fourth wall a little bit too much in this movie. He reads his name tag like he's making fun of the fact that it doesn't say Pete Davidson. He's like, Barry? 
That's not my real name. My real name's Pete. It's funny because I'm very clearly Pete Davidson and not some guy named Barry who works at a ballet stand. There's also a scene later on in the movie where he looks directly into the lens of the camera. I think they could have cut that out. Well, talking to Pete Davidson, or sorry. Barry. Uh, it's just so funny that he's pretending to be Barry. Talking to Barry didn't get him any leads, so I guess that means now it's time to go to his audition. Or, no, sorry. Sorry, he breaks into Apple's house to find clues? Find clues, please. Find clues of what? What might she have left lying around that would indicate whether she made a typo this morning or not? They find a bag of her fingers? She mi she was missing her fingers this morning, that's why she fucked up the tags. Oh. We should probably call the police, right? I'm not breaking into my girlfriend's house. <laughs> Can't believe I'm breaking into my girlfriend's house. Me neither, dude. Your life is pretty crazy. London Clash is so dumb. He makes the worst decisions at every move in this movie, okay? While they're in Apple's house, one of London's friends knocks over every single urn on the mantle and ashes go everywhere. And so they're like, oh shit, we have to put back the urns and then refill the ashes. But they're like, the only problem is where are we supposed to find ashes? Where, where are we gonna find enough ashes to fill up these urns? But like, they didn't lose the ashes. They all just fell on the floor. They could just sweep them up and put them back in urns. It's like MGK was like constantly forgetting what previously happened in movies. And so the plot is being driven forward by things that just aren't problems. So anyway, as I said, this is a stoner comedy. You can probably guess the solution they think of to produce a bunch of ashes to fill back up the urns. I'm stoner, I'm stoner. Yep, they're gonna smoke a bunch of weed. Ah, bunch of weed. This movie's crazy. They're gonna smoke a bunch of weed. <laughs> <coughs> Well, at least this dumbass plan that doesn't make any sense is gonna result in like a, some crazy shit happening, right? Something funny's bound to happen now, right? <laughs> Wrong. They just spend like 10 minutes having a boring ass smoke session on the couch. And then one of them tries to talk to a lobster. They really sat around writing this movie and were like, what's the craziest thing that could happen while, we, while we're high? And then settled on talking to a lobster. You know, since weed is legalized in a lot of places like California, where they filmed this, I feel like stoner comedies aren't nearly as like interesting or edgy as they used to be. You know, smoking used to be kind of like a fringe culture. It doesn't really feel like this is like, it's like that crazy or funny anymore. This is a scene of four adults sitting around a living room and obeying the law. Why did you spell it like that? Hmm? It's a typo. Oh my God, it was a typo all along? Who would have guessed that? Uh... So I guess now the movie can end now, right? <laughs> the movie can't end now, right? The movie can end now, right? There's 30 minutes left in this movie? What the fuck is gonna happen? What are they gonna do for 30 more minutes? Sit at a diner, apparently. So you're probably wondering how they wrap this whole thing up, huh? MGK missed his audition, he's not getting the role. His girlfriend is pissed off at him. How are they gonna wrap this movie up? Some sort of grand gesture that wins over both the director and the girlfriend? No, obviously not. That would make too much sense. London Clash gets the role because the director happened to see an Instagram live stream where where London Clash gets punched in the face by Dennis Rodman, and the director just assumes that London Clash did that because he wanted to like impress him or something. It's a whole other plot line that I didn't really go into in this video, but it do it doesn't make any sense in the movie either. So he's got the role, now the only thing left is to get the girl. Which he does by sending her a text at the diner being like, can we talk? And she's like, sure. And so they're driving to meet each other, he's texting her the whole way, he's texting and driving, and they get into a car crash, and then they are both paralyzed. That face says it all. Um, that just happened. That's the resolution. He almost murders her. Irresponsible. He was texting and driving and he almost murders his girlfriend and that's how it ends. After the credits roll, there's like a fun little blooper reel where we get to see the actors like messing around and not knowing their lines very well. Which would have been a lot more fun if I hadn't felt like I had just watched an hour and a half of exactly that. Well folks, what do you think? From rapper to pop punk icon to writer, director, and actor extraordinaire, which do you think MGK did best? Leave it in the comments down below. What do you think he'll get up to next? It's anyone's guess at this point. Professional fencer? Or maybe like a chef? He'll start just making food? That might be kind of sick. And you know what? All he would need to get started is HelloFresh.
America's number one meal kit and the sponsor of this video. Guys, I love HelloFresh. They send you fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week so you can savor delicious summer flavors right from home. I love getting a HelloFresh box because you know what it means. It means I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat for dinner every night. I'm not going to find myself driving to some fast food chain to get a quick meal because I know I've got a quality meal that I can whip up in like 35 minutes right at home. And I know it's going to be tasty. I know it's going to be healthy. If you're trying to stick to a particular health goal, HelloFresh has you covered because they have veggie options, fit and wholesome options, and pescatarian options. So HelloFresh fits a variety of lifestyles. Their plans are super flexible. You can pop Pause one week if you want to. You can add more food one week if you want to. And even if you're on vacation, you can change the delivery address to deliver to your vacation destination. And then you can have home-cooked meals when you're at the family reunion. HelloFresh is the very first carbon neutral meal kit company and nearly all of their packaging is recyclable. They help cut down on food waste because they send you pre-portioned ingredients so you're only using what you need. So if you want to check out HelloFresh and have a flavorful summer, then head on over to HelloFresh.com. Use my code TRULYGREG16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you guys for checking out HelloFresh. Now I'm going to do the outro of this video. All right, you guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg is what I call my audience here on YouTube. We're the biggest and happiest family on YouTube. That is a scientific fact. Please do not look it up. Please do not fact check me because facts don't care about your feelings and I don't care about facts. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.